Today we're going to talk about this, how to describe solutions in which you form a precipitate. Specifically, we're going to look at an example of where you mix two aqueous solutions and you make a precipitate of iron 3 hydroxide. So first, here's our problem. Let's say we have 100 milliliters of 0.5 molar iron 3 sulfate and 150 milliliters of 0.5 molar lithium hydroxide. We mix those together. Here's what we want to know. We want to know what is the limiting reactant, what's the mass of the solid produced, and here's what's new and completely different and why we're going to use something called a rice table. We want to know the concentration of each ion in solution after the reaction has occurred. So let's get going. So first, let's do a rice table. Hopefully you remember R is for reaction, I is for initial, C is for change, and E is for end or equilibrium, depending on the type of problem we're doing. So first, let's write out the reaction. I did that ahead of time to save us a little bit of work. So we've got iron, three sulfate. And remember, we have 100 milliliters of 0.5 molar that, and we have 150 milliliters of the lithium hydroxide. And those go together. This is a precipitation reaction. If you look at your solubility rules, you'll realize hydroxides are often insoluble, and this is one of those times where they're insoluble, and it forms solid iron 3 hydroxide, and that's the precipitate we're talking about. And the other product of that is aqueous lithium sulfate. So first, we want to fill out the initial amounts. And to do that, we're going to do something different. Now, I think everybody in here knows that molarity is equal to moles over liter. That's a very important formula. But what we're going to do today that's different and is extremely important that you learn this and not only just look at it and say, oh, I like that, is to actually use it. Molarity is also equal to milliliters or millimoles over milliliters. Now, the reason this is, is useful to use is whenever we're talking about solutions, we very rarely weigh out or use a volume of liters. This is helpful because if we start in milliliters and end in milliliters, we don't really have to do those uh, pesky conversions and move everything three decimals and move them back. So this will be very helpful. The only time it's not going to work is when we want to find the mass. We're going to have to change millimoles to moles and then the grams. But that's the only time that we, we, uh, we're going to have to convert out of millimoles. So let's get started. I think you know if mol molarity is equal to moles over liters, moles is equal to liters times molarity. Because when you do that, when you multiply liters times the molarity, the, um, the liters cancel out and you end up with moles. And so that's what we're going to do, except we're going to use the millimoles. So we're going to say millimoles is equal to the, the amount in milliliters times the molarity. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the milliliters, which was 100, and multiply that by 0.5. And when you do that, you get 50 millimoles. Now, you know I, I love units. I'm big on units. But in a rice table, all the units are going to be exactly the same. And since they're all exactly the same, we really only need, need to write units once. And I'm going to do that one time. And the whole other rice table will just be filled with numbers. And I'm going to know up here that the whole rice table is in millimoles because I just wrote it once. OK, let's proceed. Now we need to do the other reactant, which, which is lithium hydroxide. So we take the 150 milliliters and multiply that by 0.5. And a half of 150 is 75. Now there's zero iron three hydroxide to start with, zero lithium sulfate because those haven't reacted yet, so we're going to put zero in for both of those. So that's it. So let's proceed. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to find out what is the limiting reactant. Now to do that, to, an easy way to do limiting reactant is, is to compare the same substance. So you can take both reactants to, an, you can take one reactant to the other reactant. You can take both substances to either product. You just have to change them both to the same thing. Usually what I suggest doing is changing them to the solid that the question is asking about because you've already done a necessary conversion. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to change both reactants to our solid, which is iron 3 hydroxide. So let's get started. So what we're going to do is start with the iron 3 sulfate, and we're going to change that to the iron 3 hydroxide. Now you notice there's a 2 to 1 ratio here, and so I multiply that by 2 millimoles of iron 3 hydroxide over 1 millimole of iron 3 sulfate. Now, when I know, do that, the millimoles of iron 3 sulfate cancel out, and I'm left with millimoles of iron 3 hydroxide. So 50 times 2 is, of course, 100. And so that means that 100 millimoles of iron 3 hydroxide would be produced. Next, let's do the lithium hydroxide. So we're going to start with 75 millimoles of lithium hydroxide. But the mole ratio when you're going from lithium hydroxide over to the iron 3 hydroxide 
is a 2 to 6 ratio. So notice this is 2 to 6. We can actually just say it's like 1 to 3. So we can cancel that out and just make that a 3. And so basically we're dividing 75 by 3. 75 divided by 3 is 25. Hopefully you notice that number is smaller. That means lithium hydroxide is our limiting reactant. This is going to allow us to fill out two columns in our rice table. First, we know the lithium hydroxide has been used up completely, so we can say the change for lithium hydroxide is 75 millimoles. And if it loses 75 millimoles, it basically lost them all, so at the end, there's zero lithium hydroxide. The limiting reactant is used up completely. The other thing about the limiting reactant is important. It tells us how much product is produced and how much of the other reactant is used. So we're going to also, we've already determined how much product would be produced from this. That's 25. So we can say we're going to get 25 millimoles of lithium hydroxide, and that's added, and so at the end there's going to be 25 millimoles of lithium hydroxide. So that's the easy part. So since we already have the millimoles of lithium hydroxide, let's go ahead and answer that question up here, which is um, we know what the limiting reactant is. We've answered that, but what is the mass of that solid produced from that limiting reactant? So let's go ahead and do that. We just have two steps, so let's work on that. So what we need to do is we're going to basically start with where we left off. We say 75 divided by 3 is 25, but we want to change millimoles to moles. Now notice we did this, millimoles of lithium hydroxide cancel out. Now we have millimoles of iron 3 hydroxide. Let's go ahead and change millimoles to moles. There's a thousand millimoles in a mole, and so that cancels out. So you get rid of the millimoles. Next, we want to change moles of iron hydroxide to grams. Now we look, figure out the molar mass, which would be one iron, three oxygens, and three hydrogens. And I added that up. You can double check me. I got a molar mass of 106.87 grams. So now our moles of the iron three hydroxide cancel, and we end up with grams of iron three hydroxide. So to do this in your calculator, remember I said this is really basically, you can start with a 25 or you can start at the beginning. Remember that's the same as three. So we can say 75 divided by three, divided by 1,000, times 106.87, enter, and now you're ready for your answer. And so the amount of solid that produced is 2.67 grams of iron 3 hydroxide. So now we've almost got everything answered in this question. We have one thing left to go. Last, last thing to do is figure out the concentration of each ion in solution. And for me, this is what makes this an AP problem. This is what one thing that an example of a problem that differenti differentiates first year chemistry from AP chemistry. So let's do that. To do that, we have to fill out the rest of the rice table. So let's go back to where we left off. Remember we said to determine how much product was produced or how much reactant was used, you look at what? You look at the limiting reactants. We're going to have to use that 75 millimoles of lithium hydroxide to fill out the rest of the table. So let's do that. We're going to say 75 millimoles of lithium hydroxide, and we wanted to find the iron sulfate. Now notice the real ratio here is 1 to 6. So basically we're going to multiply, uh, divide 75 by 6, and we do this, we're going to get rid of millimoles of lithium hydroxide. And 75 divided by 6 is 12.5. means we're going to subtract 12.5 from 50 and get 37.5. And of course, that's millimoles. We also want to figure out how much lithium sulfate was formed. We're going to multiply 75 by 3 over 6, or 1 half. And so we say 75 millimoles of lithium hydroxide times 3 millimoles of lithium sulfate divided by 6. Now notice, once again, millimoles of lithium hydroxide cancel. Boom, it's gone. And we divide that by 2, and we end up with 37.5 millimoles of lithium sulfate. So the lithium sulfate goes up by 75, because that's a product. There was none of that in the beginning. And so that goes up by 37.5, and at the end we have 37.5. So we're going to use all these numbers here, the 37.5, the 0, the 25, and the 37, because these are the numbers we have at the end to figure out what are the concentrations of the ions in solution. So let's do that. Uh, let's start with the first ion. We go straight across. The first ion that we see in the reaction is lithium. Oh, just want to back up for a second. Remember, when we're doing this calculation, once again, there's a reason we, we're using millimoles to make our lives easier. And millimoles is, is uh, molarity is equal to millimoles divided by milliliters. What's awesome about that is we just have to figure out, add the millimoles up from the table and divide by the total volume. So let's do that. So let's say we're going to do iron 3 plus, And so what we need to do is look everywhere there's iron. Now, one thing you may say, well, there's iron here. Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a solid. So we mean that means we do not use 
there's no ions floating in around solution from the iron hydroxide because those have all been pulled out of solution. So the only place you have iron is right here in this iron 3 sulfate. So the 37.5, we have 37.5 millimoles of iron 3 sulfate. But in one iron 3 sulfate, there's two iron. So we need to multiply that 37.5 by 2. And so we say 37.5 by 2 divided by the total volume. Remember, there's 100 milliliters of the iron 3 sulfate, 150 milliliters of the lithium hydroxide. And so that gives us a total volume of 250. That's where that came from. And so I divide those out and I get a concentration of iron of 0.3 molar. So awesome, we're on our way. Let's, let's do the next ion in solution. I don't, and I think I picked lithium next. Now lithium, uh, notice where do we have lithium? There is no lithium here because it is a limiting reactant that's been used up completely, but there is lithium here. So we have 37.5 lithium in lithium sulfate, but notice there's two lithiums here, and that tells us we need to double that volume. Now you never use these coefficients. You only use the coefficients when you're going from one substance to another in a reaction. You don't use those coefficients when you're trying to figure out how much in solution, because we already know how much is there. We've got 37.5 millimoles of lithium sulfate. But in a lithium sulfate, there's two lithiums, so we're going to have to double that. And so the, con the calculation for the concentration of lithium is exactly the same as that for iron 3 ion. We multiply 37.5 by 2 and then divide by 250, and we get 0 0.3000 millimoles. And then notice I'm using some sig fig action that hopefully is correct there. All right, so we've got two of those. We've got uh, two more to go. Let's do those. The next one I want to look at is, let's see, we're going to do sulfate next. So where do we, let's see if you guys can figure out the sulfate. Okay, we've got sulfate here. But remember, in one iron 3 sulfate, we've got three sulfates. So this number is going to have to be multiplied by three. But also, there's a sulfate in lithium. So basically, we're going to have 37.5 with one from here and three from here, and we're gonna multiply 37.5 times two. So it's gonna be 37.5, I'm not, I'm sorry, not times two times four, and divided by 250, which gives us double the concentration, 0.6 molar of sulfate iron. Last thing, last thing we wanna do is figure out hydroxide. And let's see, where is your hydroxide? Well, all the hydroxide was used up here so there's no hydroxide there. And this hydroxide is a solid, so there's none floating around in solution. So the concentration of hydroxide is zero. You guessed it, zero. Okay, the last thing, so this really finishes our problem. We know, now we know the concentration of every ion in solution. We know the limiting reactant, and we know the mass of the solid produced. That's it. So if you can do the problem, that's awesome. Last thing I want to do is a visual representation of what happened, because you should be able to draw and visualize what's happening in that solution. So let's go back to the original drawing. And notice we said, really, at this point, there are uh, the lithium hydroxides used up, so there's none of this. And let's start with the ion. So first, we know there's a solid produced. And so this solid, which is right here, is what we see floating around in solution. We all know blood's red, and there's iron in our blood, and that's where that blood color comes from, is a presence of iron in our blood. So there's that's our solid floating around. But inside this solution here, we're going to have all those ions we talked about. So in this clear portion, we're going to have all those ions we talked about. The iron 3 plus, which was not used up completely, is going to be, it's, there's going to be a little bit of that floating around. And that actually would give a little bit of the color solution. So this may not be a very good representation of that, but it would be a slightly colored solution if there was excess of iron 3 ion. Next, lithium ion. That is a colorless ion. There's 0.3 molar of that, and that is also floating around in this clear area of our solution. One more thing is sulfate. We said we had 0.6 molar of that. That is also floating around in this clear area of our solution. And then the last thing, we have hydroxide, and there is no hydroxide floating around. All that hydroxide is found here in the solid. So that's it. Make sure you do these problems. Uh, come and see me if you have any questions. We're going to do lots of practice when we get to class. Have a great day, and go Bears.